Analysts at McKinsey and Company believe that the overall economic impact created by additive manufacturing could be close to $250 billion by 2025 if adoption across industries continues at today's rate. Most of the potential will come from the aerospace and defense, automotive, medical and consumer goods industries. For this episode of AM in Forecast, we caught up with Dr. Marcus Simon, partner at McKinsey & Company. To have a conversation on the long-term impact additive manufacturing will have on manufacturing and supply chain strategies globally. Tune in to this episode to understand how additive manufacturing will be a long-term game changer for manufacturers. So Marcus, uh, additive manufacturing has evolved very rapidly in the past five years you know, with faster technologies and varied range of materials being used. How is this impacting the manufacturing and supply chain strategies globally? Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, indeed, we have seen very fast growth in the in the last years. So it was for sure well above twenty uh, percent, depending a bit on the industry vertical you are you are talking about. But it was indeed a, a very strong uh, growth rate in the last years. What we see currently is that the growth is very much coming from uh, new players in the market, which is quite interesting. Also, with new technologies that the growth rates of the existing larger players is rather, I wouldn't say stagnating, it's the wrong word, but it's declining. So the, the growth is very much coming from these new players, new technologies. At the end, the big hurdle is still overall in the industrial usage of, of AM. Um, the question about um, how to scale it uh, for large-scale industrial customers, how to make it reliable, um, how to certificate the processes and the product quality how to make the quality repeatable, this is still, to our mind, the biggest uh, discussion point currently. And I mean, if you think about how could you speed up the scaling in the industrial world and in industrial technologies, it's all about this having a real alternative quality wise compared to traditional manufacturing technologies and having also um, a real um, alternative cost wise. So also, if you think about medium or um, large volume production, for example, in the automotive industry, we still have the situation that there are quite a lot of traditional manufacturing technologies, which basically will, will in the next future still have a better cost position if you compare it on a part by part level. So it's also very much about towing advantages of additive manufacturing, which are on top of a solely pure cost on a part by part uh, level comparison. What we see is that uh, still uh, on top of the, let's say, traditional edit uh, additive manufacturing uh, users like aerospace companies like Boeing, like Airbus, still we see quite some new uh, users with um, heavy interest in additive manufacturing. Just had a discussion um, about automotive industry where we see that uh, nowadays significant amounts of R&D uh, volume is now bundled into additive manufacture, which for me is a good signal that now it starts really uh, scaling. Because in the past, there was a lot of money in the industry, for sure. But on the user side, especially in the, for example, automotive industry, we haven't seen um, this level of, of interest in terms of R&D investments as we see it nowadays. This is, for me, a very good indicator that it will now really fly and, and scale. Yeah, that's great insights. And, you know, with, with the recent COVID-19 pandemic, which has caused severe disruptions in traditional supply chains, do you think this is influencing industries to explore adoption of additive manufacturing for industrial applications to localize supply chains and explore uh, the technology? Yeah. No, but what is quite interesting, I would say COVID has overall not dramatically changed the momentum in this industry. This was always a very fast uh, pace industry. So I wouldn't say COVID has, has overall increased the, the momentum and speed. What we still see is that uh, in certain areas, companies or industries are now thinking about usage of this technology, which in former times haven't used it. A good example to my mind is the food industry. So if you um, looked into the food industries three, four years ago, additive manufacturing was not a trend. Um, but if you nowadays discuss with them, yeah, especially in the field of spare parts, uh, they are well aware of the advantages of a localized uh, production possibility by uh, printing spare parts for uh, logistical uh, systems, for um, conveyor belts, yeah, for production equipment. 
So especially this industry, for example, is waking up. So in certain industries, I've seen additive really as a, as a momentum. Um, let people think about, well, can't we use uh, this technology uh, in order to fulfill localization demands? And according to you, you know, what are the key limitations or challenges of AM uh, which need to be addressed uh, for its wider spread adoption uh, in, in the current yeah. time? I mean, two roadblocks I, I already mentioned. One is for sure the uh, missing standardized production platform. Yeah, So being reliable and repeatable in the quality, which is still an issue, especially when you talk about medium or high volume sizes in, in production. A second point I also mentioned is still uncertainty of the business case in a lot of situations yeah, where on a part by part comparison, still have the situation that this is manufacturing is not always uh, the cheapest way of producing a part. Yeah? You, you simply have to, have to acknowledge that. So additional add-ons are, are important and additional, additional values um, you, you can mention. And then a third point is um, also the point in terms of there's often a high upfront investment necessary. So if you think about your player um, who has so far not used additive manufacturing, um, you need a high upfront investment, not just in the manufacturing equipment, but it's also very much in, in human beings, yeah, because this needs people with different skill sets. You have to think about engineers who know how to design products in a way that they can be printed. You need um, experiences in material science, yeah, because only certain materials can still be printed. If you think about metal printing, for example, this is still a, a huge limitation, um, and so on and so on. So investments in people, investments in training is on top of the hardware investment and the potential software investment um, extremely cost-wise extremely intense uh, and that is to to our mind a third roadblock or obstacle you, you definitely have to address to get it more scaled you mentioned a few industries you know like the food industry which has kind of understood the importance of am and other uh, applications but can you highlight a few other disruptive business models being created on the basis of pure uh, additive manufacturing you know new business models so one you can see quite strongly now in the market, the online manufacturing platforms. So basically they offer business on a demand basis and have access to a global network of manufacturing partners. Yeah, and, and then it depends all about how far do you go? Are you just a, a convener between a supply and demand or are you also in the fulfillment? Yeah, So do you take over the responsibility also of the quality of the produced parts as a platform provider or not, but these online manufacturing platform are for sure business model, which will, which we will see will get much stronger in the, in the future. Another one is, uh, we call it crowd design or crowdsourcing platform. So CAD crowd platforms, uh, which basically allow you to hire pre-qualified professional CAD designers, 3D modelers with proven expertise and proven knowledge. So basically people can help you in industrializing um, 3D printing. You can help you in identifying the parts which can um, per se be printed in uh, finding ways to um, match the designs with the new requirements of a 3D printed part. Yeah? And that's what I mentioned. This is really important because you see this, this human capital is in quite, of, quite a lot of companies simply not existing. Yeah? It's, it's a new skill set. And then probably a third a business model I would call them probably rather digital business models, which are disrupting traditional business models. Uh, for example, you, you have seen companies in the, in the dental industry where dental braces, uh, which, which are printed, basically disrupt a whole industry. Uh, that is another example where I would say these kind of business models where the usage of 3D printing disrupts an industry. That's also a very uh, interesting space uh, I would look into. Now, they are, of course, all very different uh, because, I mean, this example from, from the dental braces is, of course, not comparable to an example of the um, hearing aid industry, for example, where you have a similar phenomenon, but they are all have a very disruptive character. That's why I would call them new digital business models, probably with a disrupting character or theme. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. And do you think additive manufacturing will have a long-term impact on supply chains and how traditional companies manage their operations? You know? And if yes, uh, how do you see this playing out in the next uh, five to 10 years? 
So we for sure see that traditional supply chains will uh, will basically be be changed in uh, in the future. It depends again very much on the industry vertical you are in. So of course, if you are affected very much by additive manufacturing because the use cases are so clear and the advantage of additive manufacturing is so clear, it has a very fast and tremendous uh, change potential and disruption potential. If that's not the case, it is less. But if you think about the whole situation of, for example, spare parts production and supply, uh, where we see dramatical changes in the uh, in the near future, just because whenever you talk, for example, about plastic spare parts or simple, I would call them simple metal made uh, spare parts, there is no need of long stock taking and having a regional warehouse concept in each and every country of the world. In the future, it will be extremely different. Uh, so we will basically on the spot print the part you need, avoid uh, unnecessary stock taking, and avoid uh, regionalized logistic concepts. So that will really change the whole industry in, in this field of, um, of logistics for sure. Uh, what we also see is that in the overall uh, field of additive manufacturing, the business model of, of this manufacturing platform providers it also has a very disruptive um, uh, potential. So when you see currently you, you have a, a broad industry of uh, market players who basically live from producing pilot parts or these very, very small series parts. So in the future, as soon as the part is printable, and we see currently that these providers will get into massive problems. Uh, these specialized niche providers who in the past could live with very decent margins because at the, end, at the end, they were below the radar of um, the big OEMs. They just were happy to get the very small amounts, the very small lot sizes from someone with a good quality. They will get under, under enormous pressure. So this again will change a huge part of the supply chain in, in this specific field. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. Thank you for uh, you know, joining us today and sharing your insights on the additive manufacturing industry. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure. Thank you for joining in for this episode of AM Infocast powered by AM Chronicle. Do tune in to the next episode next week.